Hello, and welcome to another episode of Healthy Perspectives. My name is Vernon Solomon. September is Prostate Awareness Month, and each year we aim to highlight the importance of prostate screenings and raising awareness to prostate cancer itself. This year is no different. Fellas, I ask you to pay keen attention to our guest today, urologist Dr. Adrian Rudd. Listen as he tells us specifically the age he himself recommends screening should commence and some of the potential consequences of failing to do so. But he also explains treatment options that are currently available. being Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, we have the privilege of having with us Dr. Adrian Rudd, urologist. Dr. Rudd, over the years on this particular program, we've talked about prostate cancer, we've talked about the prostate, that a man is more than just his prostate. We've done a variety of things to try and raise awareness. And um, I'm sure I've asked this question of your colleagues in the past as well, but I'll, I'll start off by asking you, do you think we have done enough in raising awareness toward prostate and prostate cancer in particular in Antigua Morbida? And I say a resounding no. Um, unfortunately, um, prostate cancer affects black men most prevalently or men of African descent. And um, if we did things the way we should, um, our mortality rates and the number of patients presenting with advanced stage disease would be significantly lower. That means that there are a lot of men out there who are not getting screened, who are not getting tested, who are not getting early treatment, and unfortunately are presenting very late. So we'll get to the screening because I think that's going to be an important part. But if we're talking about it, and, and maybe this just goes to our culture or our mindset or just men being men, if we're, if it's on the radio, it's on TV, it's in literature, we're talking about it. Why is it you think that we're not taking it as serious as we should? So I think it's multifactorial. Um, it starts off with our primary care system. Um, in a number of first world countries, we have well-defined screening protocols um, where every doctor must comply. Um, we don't have that. Um, some doctors are not comfortable performing um, PSA checks or di digital rectal examinations. And then, of course, on the patient side of things, there are misconceptions. Patients are afraid. Patients just probably just have not had the discussion with the doctors. And as a result, we only see these patients when they actually have a problem. Screening is all about detecting diseases when there is no problem. And that's that's the message we would like to get out to our men here. So let's go into that, the screening. Explain to our men out there what that involves and what your expectation is. So screening involves detecting a disease in an asymptomatic state or a state where you have absolutely no symptoms with the view to treat and potentially cure this disease or to lower the mortality from this disease. So essentially, if we pick up prostate cancer in a patient before they feel anyway, we can actually cure the cancer. That's different to when someone comes in with advanced disease, with back pain, or unable to pass urine, and then we say, oh, look, you have cancer. How do we now manage it? Because we can't cure it. Mm. When you think about, though, the, the screening process, mm -hmm. there's this there is apprehension. So okay. explain to our viewers what is involved in screening. Because, But before you answer, correct me if I'm wrong, but a few years ago, there was a bit of controversy or correct. debate over correct. what the actual, what screening should involve. Correct. So 
screening at the moment involves two things a uh, digital rectal examination where a finger is inserted into the bottom and the prostate is felt for any nodules and a blood test the PSA also known as the prostatic specific antigen this is an enzyme which gets elevated in the face of cancer now ideally most guidelines have spoken about the combination of two Mm. Um, there has been some literature suggesting that you can get away with one, the blood test, and then depending on what that shows, you do the examination. Generally, the concern with that is you do have certain prostate cancers which will be quite advanced with a normal PSA, and we don't want to miss that. What's the gold sc- standard then as it relates to screening? So the gold standard is still the digital rectal examination and the PSA, the blood test. No, then a num, that's the gold standard. No, a number of other tests have come on board. There's special blood tests looking things like the 4K store, 4K score. A big thing now has moved to MRI where Mm -hmm. you scan the prostate and then look for abnormalities in the prostate suggestive of a cancer. Um, that's very, that's very topical in urology at the moment. And so let's bring it home then to Antigua and Barbuda. What are we able to do here? So to achieve that gold standard. So in Antigua, we have the blood test, the digital rectal examination and the PSA, the digital rectal examination and the blood test. Um, we don't have the capabilities to do the specific type of MRI. We do have a few MRI machines on island, uh, but they don't have the correct protocol. And we still need to train our radiologists and our radiographers to perform the protocol and interpret the scan. So when it comes to the the entire screening process, Mm -hmm. is there an age? And even that, there seems to have been a bit of debate. So screening in prostate cancer, like any other disease, is based on risk assessment. So the guidelines across the world vary somewhat. But to make it simple, if you're high risk, you start earlier because you're more likely to get it. If you're at normal risk, you start a little bit later. In this case, high risk, all black men, 40. So in our population, I preach 40. So, and not to cut you, yeah. every man in Antigua and Barbuda who's over the age of 40 should have their prostate, um, they should be screened for prostate cancer once a year. Now, there has been a bit of debate based on some big studies And at one point, they were saying that screening is not beneficial. That is now thrown out, and I won't go into that too (laughs) extensively. But essentially, they thought that when they looked at the studies, they thought that there was no survival benefit to screening. But then as they followed the, the, the participants in the study on for a longer period, the benefit to screening became more and more apparent. So the USPTSF, that's a big group in the... Uh, in America that deals with preventative um, preventative services, when they looked at the numbers, they said, hey, but it doesn't make sense. We recommend against screening, but they have since gone back on that and said it should be shared decision-making, a discussion should be had um, to determine if to screen. Now, in a predominantly Caucasian population, they start screening from a little later, like 50, like... Um, 55, 50, 55, depending on whose guidelines you look at. But for us, age 40. We preach age 40. And again, for that age 40, yeah. that screening process would involve the two components that you mentioned. The digital rectal examination and the PSA. Yes, Hands down, Hands that down. needs to be done. Correct. Going into the cancer itself, yeah. explain to our viewers why you're adamant about getting this screening done at an early age, because if detected early, what happens? You have a you have the potential for a cure. No, as I tell all of my patients, we can't force you to do anything, but we can. I can empower you. I can give you the information. You can. There's what we can find out when we do the biopsy. Because if your PSA is abnormal or your examination is abnormal, the next step is a biopsy. I have to speak about that first because an elevated PSA does not mean cancer. An abnormal finger examination does not mean cancer. The biopsy is the confirmatory test where we use some needles and take 
bits of the prostate, send it to the lab. The, the pathologist looks at it under the microscope and, and then can tell us, is there cancer definitively? Yes or no. If there is cancer, what type of cancer? Is it the mild one that we don't need to treat? Is it the middle grade one? Or is it the aggressive one which you won't be around? A lot of us know that the, the prostate cancer is very heterogeneous. You, we'll know some men with prostate cancer that have lived their complete lives out. They are 10, 15 years with prostate cancer doing everything normal and you would never know. And then you have the men that have prostate cancer and in two years, they're no longer with us. So that biopsy gives us in, important information to determine what kind of cancer is present and what is the best way to treat. When you hear the word cancer yeah. in any case, yeah. I think persons think immediate death. Correct. Because there is still the ability to survive for an extended period. Okay. But what are some of the complications, though, that a, a person, a, a man will experience yeah. or may experience while still living with this form of cancer? So when a patient has prostate cancer, there are a number of symptoms they may have. Um, or some men, most men with prostate cancer will feel nothing. Then as the, as the prostate grows, they may have urinary symptoms because as this mass blocks the urine passage, they may have difficulty voiding, they may be straining, they may go into urinary retention, their kidneys can be blocked by spreading cancer. Prostate cancer likes to spread to the bones of the lower back. So as it advances, a lot of men get back pain, chronic back pain, persistent back pain, which is very hard to treat. Um, this is, these are the common things that they have. Of, of course, prostate cancer can spread to the liver, to the brain, like any other cancer, but that's less common. It's often urinary symptoms and back pain. All cancers in advanced stages will cause loss of appetite, weight loss, anorexia, lethargy, feeling weak. These are also things which you can see with advanced prostate cancer. So if we're, if we're there, unfortunately, you have the, the gentleman who has not been screened early on and has mm -hmm. developed the cancer. What are the treatment options? So for advanced stage prostate cancer, the number one treatment option is hormonal therapy, something called androgen dep deprivation therapy. Now, Prostate cancer is fueled by testosterone. That is the, the energy that makes the cancer grow. These treatments will cut the testosterone and will cut the fuel to the cancer, prevent the cancer from growing and spreading. It will not cure the cancer, but it will significantly lower the, the rate of spread. For some men, this will be very effective for a long time. For some men, it won't be very effective for a long time. It all depends on your cancer. There are other drugs, chemotherapies, and a few other high-powered agents which can be added when these medications, no, when the hormonal therapy does not work. Um, but And there's no move to try to introduce these other medications earlier in the disease. Um, that's another discussion all on its own. You mentioned testosterone, and most men are going to associate their masculinity or, or being a man <laughs> with testosterone. Okay. Now you say cut that testosterone. Okay. Should he be fearful of it? So it does. It is associated with a number of side effects. It does cause men to go in, into a sort of menopause or an andropause, in which men may get hot flashes. Men may notice they're gaining weight. Breasts may get a little bigger. Um, there is a, an increase in incidence of diabetes, hypertension, and cholesterol on these medications. Um, but that you tend to see over an extended period of time. Ideally, ide it, it's not the, the ideal thing, but it is the price to pay to slow the growth of cancer and extend your life. So how do you help a man deal sort of emotionally and mentally with the cancer yeah. and the, the side effects that he may experience from the treatment. So that is a very complex issue. And in the first world, um, you have teams. Cancer care is bigger than me. Cancer care is bigger than the oncologist. Cancer care is a, is a, is a multidisciplinary approach. 
not only am I involved, you usually have patient advocates, you usually have nurses, you, there are even people who specialize in psychosocial counseling of cancer patients. Um, in the world, know that, can, know that cancer care has improved, the buzzword is survivorship. It, because a lot of times we're picking up, or generally in the world, you pick up a lot of cancers earlier, you cure them, and now the people have to live knowing that, one, I've had a cancer, I'm a cancer survivor, and I have to live with the effects of the cancer. So a lot of that is, 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 is counseling based. A lot of that is getting the patients to understand their disease, to, 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 um, get back to their normal lives as best as possible. Um, be healthy, do the normal healthy general things, which, which will continue to enhance their lives. And not only do you want to add, um, quantity, of life or extra years, but you want to improve the quality of life. Do you know if we have any support groups like that here in Antigua that may be able to work with men who may have either have cancer or dealing with the, the, the side effects? We do have some counselors at Mount St. John's and um, we do have people that deal with the social work aspect. And I'm sure they will be more than willing to assist in that area. But in terms of spe um, specialized cancer psychologists, I don't think we have those. When you were talking about the, you know, just the, the side effects themselves, mm -hmm. As a man as well, you're going to understand that he's going to be concerned that his penis continues to function as okay. it as it should. Okay. Not just for using the bathroom, okay. but also for sex. Mm -hmm. How is he impacted in that regard, or how might he be okay. impacted? So I'll take a step back, and I know we spoke about the advanced cancer and the the hormonal treatments, but. This question is very important for the men undergoing curative treatment. Mm. That is the men that now come in well. They have absolutely no problems. Their PSA is high. You do a biopsy and it says there's cancer. But doctor, I feel absolutely fine. Right. These are the guys who you then have options to treat or options for cure. The major options for cure are surgical and radiotherapy. Surgical options re involve removing the prostate where we go in and remove the prostate. We can do it open, laparoscopic or robotic. And radiation, the radiation oncologists give you radiation. We can do it at the cancer center. Each one of these affect your continence and erectile function in significant and variable ways. So that is a big discussion and a big part of individual treat, individualizing treatment for the men with prostate cancer. And as a man, we need to go into it with that mindset. Correct. That takes us back to the, the very beginning of the discussion. Do you think persons may be apprehensive about even being screened because of fear along that lines? In my practice, no. I think I find the men are, are reasonable. They do understand you're dealing with a life-threatening situation versus erectile function and continence. A big part of things is um, managing expectations. Mm -hmm. I tell patients that your continence and erectile function will not be the same. There are cases when you can do an amazing surgery and it will be the same, but a lot of the time it is not. So you have to come to terms with that. But it is the trade-off to extend your life, to be around your family, to see your kids, to see your grandkids, and most people are happy with that. The other thing is the effects may change with time. If you do surgery, there is an improvement in continence and erectile function. If you do radiation, there tends to be a reduction in it over time. So these are things that the men have to understand. But as a man anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, should we expect that there will be changes as we get older anyway? Correct. There, there will be changes, particularly in your urinary control, as well, and with your erectile function as a normal part of aging. Um, so it is controversial when they look at the studies and follow these old men on in time and see what happens with the erectile function. It all goes down after treatment, but other people argue that the, f the function will deteriorate with time and age as well. Because of the, the culture in which we live and have grown up with, 
our environment plays a, a big factor in our overall health and, and well-being. Are there specific diets, exercises, nutrients that are being suggested in the urological society? Yes. So diet is a big thing. The challenge with diet is it's very hard to rule out the confounding effect because someone that has a very clean diet usually exercises, usually does not smoke. So if they don't get cancer, was it the fact that they didn't smoke, exercise, or is it the diet? Some people are saying, look, I should diet, exercise, and be vegan. This person would say diet, exercise, and be keto. And, you know, mm -hmm. so, but... Generally, the studies are showing certain things we should avoid. Red meats. Red meats seem to be somewhat associated with a higher incidence of cancers, not only in the prostate, the colon as well. Um, diets rich in fats and fatty foods. Diets rich in um, meaty diets tend to be more associated with cancer. So there's a, a, a tendency to lean towards um, more fruits and vegetables. Um, less meats, um, fish to an extent is good, um, increasing the amount of antioxidants. So those come mostly in fruits and vegetables, less processed foods, less um, added sugars, added salts, because as we understand cancer genetics, we're now slowly understanding that these things may play a role. I know we didn't have a chance to, to discuss this one, but I'll throw it at you anyway. Sleep. Sleep. So once again, very <laughs> controversial. It's generally thought that the body needs six to eight hours of sleep for to be healthy. When you sleep, your body repairs itself, regenerates. So in theory, it is good. Um, once again, the confounding effect, the person that's not sleeping is probably the person that's working too hard, probably up late doing different activities which may not be so healthy um is it the sleep is it the other activities generally six to eight hours of sleep is a healthy thing to do and it's part of a healthy lifestyle but there is no hard evidence to say your cancer risk goes up because you do not sleep well understood understood so it all goes back to everything that we've been preaching if you would from the beginning is look after yourself correct and it will come down to prevention, diet, yeah. exercise, prevention, healthy lifestyle from early, early detection. And um, that's what we would like to preach. And before we let you go, this whole topic about screening, is there or are there other areas that um, of screening that men as we age should be looking at and should be focusing on? So men at the age of 40s and up should consider their PSA, mm -hmm. prostate screening, screening for prostate cancer. You should be considering screening for colon cancer. That is also fairly prominent. So everyone is now talking about what happened to Chadwick Boseman. Right. Um, and uh, those are the common cancers, but anyone can get any cancer. The other common things, because what, what kills more people than cancer is cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease associated with hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia or high cholesterol. So these are the things that need to be done. I encourage everyone once a year, around your birthday so you don't forget, go to your doctor, have a general screen. Let them check these things, your, diet, your sugar, your pressure, cholesterol. If everything is fine, you don't have to pass back. This may be how you pick up early problems before you feel them and have the and, and you then have the ability to address them, fix them, treat them, cure them. I think one of the key things that you that I take away from this discussion is 40. Once you turn 40. And and that, that is correct. 40 is a good number, but it all depends on certain things and your risk. There's certain societies suggest um cholesterol screening from 35 mm. depending on your risk mm -hmm. so, but at age 40 is a real good time to start looking out for yourself i think you've only scratched the surface of a number of topics that we can can actually pick up on men's health is something obviously that um, this program has has held dearly and i do believe that hearing you 
today there are a number of other issues if you're willing to come back and, and join us on anytime <laughs> truly appreciate it thank you very much thanks for having me stay with us we'll be right back gents the main takeaway for us today get screened for prostate cancer while 40 may be the recommended age to commence screening speak with your healthcare provider in the event screening for you needs to start sooner and as always as a good health regimen eat a balanced diet Avoid high-fat, sodium-laced, and sugary foods. Exercise routinely and get seven to eight hours of sleep. All recommendations aimed at enhancing your overall wellness. Take care of yourselves. We thank you for spending some time with us and for allowing us to share healthy perspectives with you. Be well, Antigua and Barbuda, and may your perspective always be a healthy one.